Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about how do we handle exceptions in JSP. Of course we have done that in Java right, so when you work on CoJava, when you work on servlets, it's easy to handle exception because we all know how to use try catch. That's the general way right. So if you have learned exception handling in Java, you, you know we have throws, we have uh, try catch. Now can we really use those things in JSP? In fact, if you have servlet, what you can do is, let's say if you have an exception here, you have a very common line. Uh, we know about these things, right? We have checked exceptions, we have unchecked exceptions. So if you say you have a line which is k equal to uh, 9 divided by 0. Now for sure we know this line will generate an exception, but that is an unchecked exception. So your compiler is not giving you any error for that. So it's your choice if you want to handle this. And it's always good practice, right? Now how do we handle this? So what we do is we write try and catch. But can we do that in JSP? Uh, the answer is yes. So if I go to this JSP and if let's say if you have some lines here, but I want to ignore all the lines, I just want to focus on one thing here, which is int k is equal to 9 divided by 0. That's the one line I want to write here. Of course, there will be some other lines as well. Now, how do we handle the exception here? So if I run this code, of course, you will get an exception or you will it will stop the execution. It will generate an exception. So I would say run as run on server and let's see what happens on JSP. So you can see we got an exception here, which is error 500. We all love these errors. So you can see that it is showing the exact code where you are getting the error, which is uh, line number 13 and this line line of exception. Now the problem is it is stopping the execution. So of course it is this thing is viewed. So a client can see this code. And the second problem is it is stopping the execution. We don't want to do that. We don't want to stop the execution. And the way you can do that is by using a try catch here. So I can say a try. Let me put this thing in a try block. And then we'll say a catch. I would say exception e. And in the exception, I would print something. Of course, not out dot not system dot dot print ln. I would say out dot print ln. And in this, I want to print k or not k, but of course, I would I want to print. There was some error, and I also want to print the message of error. So I would say e dot get message. That's what we do in normal exception handling, right? In fact, there are different ways you can maintain log file if you want, but I don't want to do those things here. So you can see I'm trying to handle the exception. And once I have done this, I will go back to my JSP or the output page, just refresh. And you can see this time uh, it is not stopping the execution. It is just, it is showing you the error. Now still we have an issue here because if we talk about the web world, in a web world, if you get an exception, you should inform your client, hey, what went wrong? There should be a proper, na proper navigation. You can see I'm printing the messages here itself. This is not a good practice when it comes to web development. Of course, for CoJava, for a standalone application, we can surely use this. But when it comes to web world, what we do is we create a separate page because in your, in your application, you might be having seven to eight pages. Of course, you will be having more than that. So if you have so many pages, it's, it's better to have a dedicated page which will be showing the error, which will have a different color, of course. Uh, you can print, you can have the uh, entire page in red color. How do we do that? So what we'll do is we'll create a separate page, which is an error page. So what I will do is I will go back here in, the, in my web content. I will create a new JSP and we'll name that JSP as error.jsp. And in this page, I want to show the exception, whatever exception there was. Now, how do we do that? So first of all, if you remember when we talked about the implicit objects, there will be one object, which is exception object, but exception is pretty special. That was that that's why we have not seen there. Example, if I simply use a thing here, which is the expression tag, and I can simply use exception object, that's it. But you can see that it is not working. It is showing exception cannot be resolved. That's a problem here. How do we solve it? That's a different thing. But I want to call this page. Uh, maybe I, I will just use this thing later. I just want to print error till this point. We'll do this after some time. So for time being, I would say comment this part. Okay, I want to print error. Now the way you can call this page is by mentioning so somewhere you have to mention, right, that in case if there's any problem in this page, you have to call error.jsp. The way you do that is by using this page attribute, you know, page tag. This is very important tag, right? We have seen that before. I don't want to import, import any statement here that was just for the previous examples. So here I will mention whatever error goes in this page will be handled by this error page. So this error page name is error.jsp. So we are mentioning whatever whatever gets wrong on in this page, this will be calling error.jsp and it should work, I guess. Let me just go back to my HTML or the output 
and I will refresh this time and you can see that it is calling, it is printing something, it's printing error. And this error text is in error.jsp. So for sure you're calling this page. If you want to make sure you can also do this thing, uh, you can change your page color to red because that's how you show the uh, something is something is wrong, right? So if I refresh, you can see we got an uh, we got a red, red color. So yes, it is calling this error.jsp. But I also want to know what is going wrong. The way you can do that is by mentioning is by using this thing. So you can you can you can print exception message, but there's a problem. It is it it says it is unable to resolve the exception. Now the reason it is happening is this page should know that this is an error page. And how do we do that? So we in this thing you have to mention one more attribute which is is error page. We have seen this before, right? When we talked about the page tag, uh, we have seen what is is error page. So you can simply mention is it a error page? Of course it is. So we have to say true. And now. If you have a error page, so this page is error page, right? And that's where you can use the exception. So point to remember, exception is an object which only works in a page, error page. And now using this exception object, you can print the message. You can say get message, whatever went wrong. And now once we have done that, go back to this page, refresh, and you can see it says error divided by zero that's that's your message right of course you can print whatever you want you can say get message or you can just whatever data you want to pick up from the exception object so this is the, this is one way or this is the best way of handling the exception in jsp of course if you are implementing a uh, mvc you'll be having a different way of implementing it but if you are using simply jsp or servlet you can use this thing so that's how you handle the exception there's no compulsion that you should be using this you can also go with try catch that's your wish but as we have seen, it's always to follow convention. That's how you handle the exceptions in JSP. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and do like the video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching everyone.